वेलकम वी विल स्टार्ट विथ वेरी बेसिक एंड इम्पॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन वॉट इज क्लीन रूम ए रूम डिजाइन मेंटेन्ड एंड कंट्रोल्ड टू प्रिवेंट पर्टिकुलेट एंड माइक्रोबल कंटेमिनेशन ऑफ ए ड्रग प्रोडक्ट्स इज कॉल्ड क्लीन रूम सच ए रूम इज असाइंड एंड रिप्रोड्यूसिबली मीट्स एंड अप्रोप्रिएट एयर क्लीननेस लेवल रेफरेंस यू जी एम पी अन एक्स वन ग्लॉसरी वॉट इज लिमिट फॉर एयर बॉन्ड पार्टिकल कॉन्सेंट्रेशन दैट इज एन वी पी सी इन ग्रेड ए बी सी एंड डी यू कैन रेफर बिलो टेबल फॉर लिमिट्स फॉर एयर बॉन्ड पर्टिकुलेट कॉन्सेंट्रेशन फॉर द मॉनिटरिंग ऑफ नॉन वायबल कंटेमिनेशन रेफरेंस यू जी एम पी अन एक्स वन पॉइंट नंबर नाइन पॉइंट फिफ्टीन वॉट इज मैक्सिमम एक्शन लिमिट्स फॉर वायबल पार्टिकल कंटेमिनेशन यू कैन रेफर बिलो टेबल फॉर मैक्सिमम एक्शन लिमिट्स फॉर वायबल पार्टिकल कंटेमिनेशन इन ग्रेड ए ग्रेड बी ग्रेड सी एंड ग्रेड डी रेफरेंस यू जी एम पी अन एक्स वन पॉइंट नंबर नाइन पॉइंट थर्टी वेदर सिंक्स एंड ड्रेन्स आर अलाउड इन ग्रेड ए एंड ग्रेड बी एरिया सिंक्स एंड ड्रेन्स आर प्रोहिबिटेड और नॉट अलाउड इन ग्रेड ए जोन एंड ग्रेड बी एरिया रेफरेंस यू जी एम पी अन एक्स वन पॉइंट नंबर फोर पॉइंट नाइन What should be the air velocity in grade A? The recommended air flow velocity is influenced by factors like maintaining unidirectional air flow, preventing cross contamination and ensuring particle control. Generally in aseptic processing areas that is grade A, the recommended air flow velocity ranges from 0.36 to 0.54 meters per second or 71 to 106 feet per minute. and the specific requirements of the regulatory authority reference guideline ugmp annex 1 point number 4.32 what are the methods for monitoring viable and non viable particles for viable particle monitoring methods we use active air samplers sampling plates impaction samplers and surface microbial monitoring while in case of non viable particle monitoring we use airborne particle counters total airborne particle samplers laser diffraction particle counters and light microscopy you can refer below table for detection application and the regulatory requirements next question what is use of air locks in clean room answer is air lock should be designed and used to provide physical separation and to minimize microbial and particulate contamination of the different areas and should be present for material and personal moving between different grades wherever possible air locks used for personal movement should be separated from those used for material movement reference ugmp annex 1 point number 4.9 where should be the hand washing facility provided in injectable manufacturing facility hand washing facility should be provided only in the first stage of the changing room Hand washing facility shall not be present in changing rooms directly assessing grade B clean rooms. Reference UGMP Annex One Point Number Four Point Twelve. What is the differential pressure requirement for adjacent rooms in clean area? In clean area, adjacent rooms of different grades should have pressure differentials of a minimum of ten pascals pressure. Differentials are identified as critical. and should be continuously monitored and recorded reference ugmp annex 1 point number 14 and 16 whether view glasses and cameras shall be available in clean rooms facilities should be designed to allow observation of production activities from outside the grade a zone and grade b area example through the provision of windows or remote cameras with a full view of the area and processes View glasses and cameras are needed to allow observation and supervision without entry. This requirement should be considered while designing new facilities or during refurbishment or renovation of existing facilities. Reference UGMP Annex One Point Number Four Point Seventeen. What is requirement for air flow patterns in clean rooms or injectable dosage forms? Air flow patterns within clean rooms and zones. should be visualized to demonstrate that there is no ingress of air from lower grade to higher grade areas air should not travel from less clean areas or over operator or equipment that may transfer contaminant to the higher grade areas video recordings of the air flow patterns should be 
retained or preserved the outcome of the air visualization study should be considered when establishing the facilities environmental monitoring program reference ugmp annex 1 point number 4.15 what are the requirements for door air locks as per ugmp annex 1 Both sets of doors for pass-throughs and air locks should not be opened simultaneously. There should be an interlock. For air locks leading to a grade A zone and grade B areas, an interlocking system should be used. For air locks leading to grade C and D clean rooms, a visual and or audio warning system should be operated as a minimum. A time delay between the closing and opening of interlocked doors. should be set or established reference ugmp annex 1 point number 4.13 when we should perform glow integrity test for glows used in clean rooms the glow integrity testing should be performed at defined periods minimum at the beginning and end of each batch and should include visual inspection reference ugmp annex 1 point number 4.23 In case of isolated based facility what should be the background environment the background environment of a closed isolated system should correspond to a minimum of grade C or grade D air flow study should be performed to demonstrate the absence of air ingress during intervention such as door openings reference ugmp annex 1 point number 4.21 and 4.22 however it is common industrial practice to keep background area as grade C for better control which test shall be covered in clean room classification the qualification of clean rooms and clean air equipment should include following tests first installed filter leakage and integrity testing second air flow measurement third air pressure difference measurement fourth air flow direction and visualization fifth microbial air bond and surface contamination sixth temperature measurement seventh relative humidity measurement eighth recovery testing and ninth containment leak testing reference ugmp annex 1 point number 4.27 what is governing qualification for clean rooms governing qualification is a program or process that establishes both initially and on periodic basis the capability of an individual to don or wear the complete sterile gown in an aseptic manner reference ugmp annex 1 glossary what is critical zone in clean rooms a location within the aseptic processing area in which product and critical surfaces are exposed to the environment reference ugmp annex 1 glossary whether we need to define alert level and action level for non viable particle count answer is yes alert and action limits shall be defined for nvpc count in clean rooms alert levels should be set based on historical data alarm should be triggered if alert levels are exceeded procedures should define the action plan in response to alarms including the consideration of additional microbial monitoring reference ugmp annex 1 point number 9.11 and 9.15 which activities shall be performed in grade a and grade b first we will see grade a aseptic preparations and filling shall be done in grade a area This includes actual filling of filtered product in a container. Filled product container shall get closed or sealed within grade A only. Now we will see grade B. Grade B is background room conditions for activities requiring grade A. This includes presence of personnel to perform required interventions in grade A. In grade B environment, supporting activities for grade A shall be done. which activities shall be performed in grade c and grade d area first we will look grade c preparation of solution to be filtered shall be done in at least grade c whereas filtered bulk shall be aseptically transferred to filling station now we will see grade d handling of components after washing shall be done in grade d area component preparation activities shall be performed at least in the grade d area handling of components after washing shall be done in grade d whether conveyor belt can pass through grade a to grade b area a conveyor belt should not pass through a partition between a grade a or b area conveyor belt should not pass through a processing area of lower air cleanliness 
unless the belt itself is continually sterilized example belt in a sterilizing tunnel or depyrogenization tunnel reference ugmp annex 1 point number 5.8 what is requirement for tubing used for nvpc counting the tubing length should not be greater than 1 meter with a minimum number of bends and bend radius should be greater than 15 cm portable particle counters with a short length of sample tubings should be used for classification purpose reference ugmp annex 1 point number 5.9 which type of monitorings are commonly done in clean rooms of pharmaceutical industry you can refer below table for various types of monitorings that are commonly done in clean rooms of pharmaceutical industry it includes airborne particle monitoring microbial monitoring temperature and humidity monitoring pressure differential monitoring air flow velocity monitoring nvpc count monitoring surface contamination monitoring environmental monitoring of utilities and personal monitoring last and very important question which guidelines are commonly referred for clean room in pharmaceutical industry following eight guidelines are commonly referred for clean room in pharmaceutical industry iso 14644 ugmp annex 1 usfds guideline pix guideline who guideline ich q7a stm e2500 and iso 14698 Keep watching Farmgo subscribe to channel for more videos related to our pharmaceutical industry